Psalm 61, Assurance of God's Eternal Protection To the chief musician on a stringed instrument, a psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings, Selah. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows.
to give thanks in all season of life. I know this is not easy. As they said, it is easier said than done. But I believe that uh, as we continue to journey in our walk with the Lord, we know that we will continue to cultivate that gratitude attitude because we always believe that gratitude is a godly attitude. Brothers and sisters, good morning to everyone and welcome to our worship celebration. And today is a beautiful, wonderful day that we can celebrate the love of God and His faithfulness into our lives. Let us come together and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you because you are faithful. You continue to show not only your power and your greatness into our life amidst of difficulties and troubles into our journey in this world. We know that you constantly provide all our needs. And we thank you for that, O oh God. And so today, Lord, once again, help us, Lord, to cultivate that kind of attitude, a godly attitude of gratitude, so that the more we are grateful to you, the more that our heart is thankful to you and to what you are doing to our lives, it will teach us to really see the things that you have provided, the things that you will continue to provide, that you will continue to be indeed our great provider. No matter what and no matter what season that we go through in this life, you will remain faithful. You will remain our great provider. Thank you so much, Lord, for seeing us through. And we pray that you will speak to all of us again. Use your word and your servant as I share your word to your people, O God, today. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God is in the business of building our character that we may reflect the image of his son. I repeat, God is in the business of building our character that we may reflect the image of his son. The sovereignty of God tells us that God can use trials to mold and build our faith and character. God can turn the mess and make it into a message. Let me just invite everyone to turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, and this is what the Bible says. Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. When people look at us today, do we, re we really reflect the image of Jesus? Do we really reflect the image of Christ? If people will describe your life in one word, what word best fit about you? Inspiring? Blessed, encouraging, or worth imitating? Or the opposite of all these descriptions? Today I would like to direct your attention to my favorite book in the New Testament, the book of Thessalonians. Why? Because it bears the name of my one and only wife. The book of Thessalonians were written by Paul as a letter addressed to the believers who have been facing persecutions. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 4 to 9, it was recorded that a large number of God-fearing Gentiles, which is the target mission of uh, Paul, God called him to be a missionary among the Gentiles. Few prominent women and some Jews were convinced that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer, to die, and he will rise again from the dead. It was recorded that the non-believer Jewish stir up a riot and drive out Paul from the town and arrest Jason. Jason is a prominent Thessalonian who was hosting Paul and Silas in secret in his home. When they couldn't find Paul and Silas, Jason was brought before the city officials and was questioned why 
he was entertaining Paul and Silas, whom this person turning the world upside down. They accused Paul of defying Caesar's decrees because of his teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, the name Jason means healer or the Lord is salvation. One of the theme of Thessalonians or the book of Thessalonians is to encourage one another. In the season full of trials, it is good for the believers to encourage one another with the word of God. That is why our digital ministry paved the way in order that we continue to meet up even if it is all virtual, but at least they can be a source of encouragement. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 27 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It is good for us to continually meet, each, uh, meet together and be able to encourage one another in words and in acts of love. Especially in this time of difficulties, we need our brother or our sister in the Lord so that we can strengthen each other in our faith, in our walk with the Lord, that despite of what we are going through, we know that we can still hold on to the promises of God and we can still believe that God is really good. Paul laid down three wonderful principles on how we should encourage one another in these difficult times. Let me just share with you these three, yet, uh, three very important uh, principles, very practical, and I hope that we will all learn together. Number one. Be joyful at all times. It says in verse 16, always be joyful. To be joyful at all times boils down to our deep connection with God. Through good and bad times, the Bible taught us to be joyful. Let me just share with you some of these passages in the New Testament and one in the Old Testament. Romans chapter 12 verse 12 says, Rejoice in our comfort hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. In Psalm 33 verse 1 says, Let the godly sing for the joy of the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise Him. And in Matthew 28 verse 8 says, The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very terrified or frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angels' message. Ironic, isn't it? They were very frightened, but at the same time, they are also filled with great joy. To be joyful or to be a joyful person is not being happy. Because happiness is dependent on the happenings around us. When everything is good and smooth sailing in your life or in our life, you are happy, right? Right? But happiness is temporary because not all the time you have a good and pleasing moment in your life. There will come a time that you and I will go through bumpy roads and detours in our life. Being joyful, on the other hand, is the ability to see things beyond situation, beyond our, the happenings around us, even when you are in bad times and deep waters in life, you face them with joy in your hearts. Joy comes from God and it is dependent on God himself. Regardless of bad and gloomy times in your business perhaps, in your family, or maybe in your marital status, in your school responsibilities, and even in the ministry, we always anchor our life on God who is the source of our eternal joy. So to be joyful at all times, that means whether good or bad, it is to experience the very grace of God in our life. The grace of God helps us smile and look at you know, the brighter side of our situation. 
For our teens who are into online classes, sometimes you feel sad and disappointed when you have learned that you have failed and received a low mark in your exam, even when you have given all your best. For the business people who have tried all the possible solutions to your current problems in the business and still failed to see good results. This makes you discouraged, isn't it? Joy comes from God and it overflows from the inside and out. You learn and we learn to see beyond our bad situation with our spiritual lenses and believe that God knows what is best for us. Our bad experiences could be a blessing in disguise. When you learn to trust God, when you learn to anchor your faith on this God who knows everything, He knows what is best for us. Simple joy for little children is like joy wine. Not expensive, yet they get to enjoy and be satisfied. My son Josiah wants to go with me every time I drive the car because he wanted to see downtown he wants to see Baywalk. And so one Sunday afternoon, we went around just to have joy ride. And he was really satisfied. He was so happy. Simple joy. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, be joyful at all times. Secondly, be persistent in prayer. In verse 17 it says, never stop praying. The Gospel of Luke in chapter 11, verses 5 to 13, speaks of a parable of the persistent friend. A friend went to see this man at midnight, needing three loaves, for he had some visitors. The friend will say, don't bother me. The door is now closed, and I am already in bed with my children. I can't give you anything. But because his friend was persistent, the man will rise and give him whatever he needs. This parable is teaching us persistency in prayer. That is why never stop praying until breakthrough happens in your life. Never stop praying until breakthrough happens in your life. There will be breakthroughs into our lives when we never stop praying when we never give up praying to the Lord. We need to be persistent in prayer. We, need, we never stop praying until the door of heaven will be open for you. Never stop praying until God answers your prayer. That is why persistency is the key to consistency. Persistency is the key to consistency. We always hear that saying, Practice makes perfect, right? But for me, better, I would say practice makes permanent. When you keep on practicing prayer every day, it becomes permanent to your daily routine. Then it becomes your habit. Habit becomes permanent to your daily life. That is why practice makes permanent. The Bible teaches us persistency in prayer in the acronym or in the word ask. Ask, keep on asking. S, keep on seeking. And K, keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on asking. Never give up. Never quit. Keep on asking until breakthrough will happen into your life. My dear brothers and sisters, in this time of pandemic, we need to be persistent in our prayer. Praying for God's protection. Praying for God's shield. Praying for God's covering upon each one of us, our families, especially for those who are frontliners. They are more exposed than us. And so let us continue to uphold them in our prayers so that more and more that the Lord will shield them from the virus. Be persistent in prayer. And thirdly, be thankful in every circumstance. Be thankful in every circumstance. In verse 18 it says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. 
Understanding the nature of God's will into our life is the key to be thankful in all circumstances. God's will outweigh all the circumstances in our life. No matter how terrible our circumstance is, we will rest on the will of God for us. Because we know that the will of God is really something that will give us assurance. Romans 12 verse 2 says that you will learn to know God's will for you which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Yes, God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect because He is a perfect God. God masters the imperfect to be perfect. God masters the not pleasing situation and become pleasing to us. God masters the not so good situation to something good for all of us who love Him. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to Him. When we learn to be thankful to God amidst trials, it becomes a blessing in disguise. We learn to see the better side, the brighter side of our situation. We focus on God rather than on our circumstances. Zooming in on God rather than on the problem. So we will be able to see God who is so perfect, good. He is a loving God. He is a wonderful, mighty, uh, heavenly Father. And so when we zoom in to Him rather than on our problem, there will always be an assurance that this God will see us through. Brothers and sisters, be thankful in every circumstance. There was a story of a black crow. And this crow was flying, enjoying his freedom. And so he was just thinking, how come that whenever he landed to a certain place with people, immediately these people will shoo him away. And so as he was flying, maybe he was thinking, maybe because of his color, he was black. And so people don't like color black. And then finally, as he was flying, he saw a swan. And when he saw a swan, he was thinking, wow, this swan is so beautiful, so white. And I'm sure people would love this swan. And he went to the swan and asked, are you happy? Are you thankful that you are beautiful? Then the swan replied, Yes, I am thankful, I am happy. But when I saw the parrot more beautiful than me, I wish I could be a parrot someday. And so immediately the black crow flew and looked for the parrot. And when he saw the parrot, he asked the parrot, Are you happy because you are beautiful? Then the parrot replied, yes, I am happy because I'm beautiful. But when I saw the peacock, she is more beautiful than me. I wish I could be like the peacock someday. And so the crow looked for the peacock. And when he saw the peacock, he was so amazed with his beauty, with her beauty. And so he, she, the, the, the black crow asked the peacock, are you happy? Are you thankful? Then the pickup replied, yes, I know I am beautiful, I am thankful, but because of my beauty, I was stuck in this zoo. How I wish I could be like you. A pro, you enjoy the view, wherever you wish to go, you can go. And so the black pro uh, went away, thinking, I could be grateful, I could be thankful because I have the freedom not like the pickup. She was so beautiful, but she was stuck in the zoo. A lot of people were looking at her, taking pictures at her, but she cannot fly. She cannot fly like me, going around different places because I have the freedom. That's the lesson of the story. Be thankful. Be thankful for whatever circumstance you have in life. Be thankful for whatever blessings God has provided you. Be thankful that you know 
God is good to you. My dear brothers and sisters, trials are God's building moment in our life. Yes, it is true. He builds our character. He molds us. He develops our faith so that when we go through all the trials, we will learn to be joyful at all times. We will learn to be persistent in our prayer. And we will learn to be thankful in every circumstance. Because we know that all these trials we go through in life, God has a purpose. God is using all these trials to build our life, to build our faith, to build us so that more and more we will reflect the image of His Son. May the Lord bless us today with these three simple principles so that as we look into our situation, instead of zooming in to our problem, you zoom in on the God who is good, who is perfect, who will continue to be in control of your situation. So with these simple principles, may the Lord bless us. May the Lord help us to put them into practice so that we may grow thereby. Let us pray together. Our gracious and loving God, thank you once again for today. Thank you, Lord, because we have the freedom to worship you. And thank you for the simple truths that we have learned this morning. That as we continue to face trials of many kinds, Lord, we will look at trials as, as God's building moment into our life. Lord, continue to help us to be joyful at all times, to be persistent in our prayer, and to be thankful in every circumstance. Because we know that you are in control. You know what is best for us. That even as we go through difficulties in life, we know that you have something, something good in store for us. Yes, Lord, thank you so much, not only for the blessings you provide, but also for the trials you allowed us to go through in life. Because overall, this will be for, for us, Lord, for our faith, so that it will develop, so that, it will, that we will become mature, so that we will be conformed into the image of your Son. And ultimately, it will be for your glory and honor. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be upon us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. God bless us all. Keep safe.